Do you know that your entire body contains so much space that it can be compacted and fit into a little matchbox? Let's find out what Krishna has to say about it. Namaste. Chapter 2, Shloka 23 to 25. So in these shlokas, Lord Krishna tries to tell us about the nature of the Atma again. So he says that the Atma is very ordinary and it's very inert. See, usually we consider everything else ordinary and things like uh, spirituality, Atma, Self uh, as something very special, right? So he's trying to break that myth here and he's trying to say that actually the most ordinary thing, something that's present everywhere and something that is as common as it can be is the Atma. And you know, the, he says that the Atma is so inert and ordinary. And he compares the situation with the smoke over the wall. So he says that as the smoke flies over the wall, it just tarnishes the outside of the wall. But it can do nothing to the substance inside. It does not affect the material inside the wall, right? Similar is the life of a man who is meddled in the outside world. The outside world can tarnish the body and the experiences of the person from the outside, but it cannot even touch the soul. As he says, it is inert. The soul does not react with anything that gets happened, that happens outside. And he says it is all pervading and eternal, which means it is everywhere. It cannot be killed, touched or hurt. At the same time, it is everlasting. It does not die. It is beyond time and it is beyond life. It is beyond situations. And he says that over the time, people have tried to describe it in various ways. You know, everybody has different concepts and explanations of what an Atma is, right? Most of us have even been scared of it as kids. So people have different definitions and concepts and ways to explain it. But it can only be explained or understood to the depth that the person who is trying to understand it has purified themselves and which is also directly proportional to the amount of misery someone goes through. Now misery he says is just a concept in the mind that remains there as long as you do not understand what Atma is or what you are. And then he says that it can also not be perceived by the five senses in the sense that you cannot see it you cannot hear it, you can only experience it, or rather, you can only be it. It's like the fifth element in the uh, space, you know, it is the ether or the akasha, which can only be experienced, which just exists. You cannot really see it, think it, or feel about it. So he gives the example of the ocean. No matter how much you try to tell someone what an ocean is, you can describe it as blue water or, or you know, things like that. But only once somebody has seen the ocean can they understand what an ocean actually is, right? Similar is the case with Atma. You only can experience it to understand it. And the more you remove your ignorances and hence the misery, the more closer you get to the understanding of it. So that's for shloka number 23 to 25. Namaste.